The time having arrived, I call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order and ask everyone to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So this is a very unique school committee meeting that we do once a year because we have the uh, Student Achievement Awards ready to get underway out in the main Fine Arts Auditorium. So we're going to take a recess. I anticipate the recess will be about 60 minutes, but it's not exact. And then uh, we will reconvene back here in the Little Theater to conduct the balance of business as scheduled on the agenda of tonight's school committee meeting. So at this time I call a recess. We expect to reconvene in about 60 minutes. You sure? I can't just do that on my own? You sure? All right, I'm sorry. I guess I can't do that on my own. I need a motion for us to recess. Yeah. Opposed? Okay. Now we are in recess. Okay, we call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee back to order. Thank you very much, everyone, for your patience while we recognize the outstanding students from the Brockton Schools next door. Uh, first off, at the top of the meeting, we have hearing of visitors. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the mayor, the superintendent, and the school committee directly. Uh, we ask that you limit your comments to a maximum of three minutes and there's no direct response uh, from the school committee. All matters are taken under advisement. We have one person who signed up for hearing of visitors tonight, Robert Gorman. Good evening. Oh good, it's working. Members of the school committee, Superintendent Smith, Mayor Carpenter, my name is Robert Gorman and I'm a teacher at the Pluff Academy. I come to you today as a citizen born and raised in the city of Champions. Now, I went through the Brockton Public School System. I was encouraged by my parents to take advantage of everything it had to offer and I did. I was in the earlier years of the TAG program at the Louis F. Angelo where I habitually took part in an after-school computer class. I took part in intramural and middle school sports at North Junior High. When I got to the high school, I did wind ensemble, marching band, varsity swimming, and JROTC. All of these programs, sorry, all of these are programs that serve to further culture and educate our youths beyond the minimum, beyond just getting by. These are programs that shape personalities, that test character, that endear a school to its student body. Programs like these are only possible when the school system is stable enough to support them. The education I had received in Brockton had given me the agency to claim power over my own life, the power to choose what to do with it. When I graduated college, I could have gone anywhere. I chose Brockton. I chose Brockton because I believed in it because I knew it was an exceptional school system and that it provided hope to all that came into contact with it. I knew I wanted to be a part of that. That being said, after all that I've heard from these past few meetings, I have to wonder what the end game here is. As Superintendent Smith has mentioned, Brockton is a growing community. While we may get by with what we cut this time, what about the next time we're underfunded by poorly constructed federal funding formulas? Will that computer class I went to at the Louis F. Angelo still be there? Will intramurals? How about the marching band or the wind ensemble? If this continues and the school system is pushed to do even more with even less, I fear that beyond losing teachers, this gem of an education system may turn into a shadow of its former self. That will be the greater tragedy. At this time, uh, we will consider the consent agenda. The consent agenda is a manner in which uh, the school committee
can address routine pieces of business as a block. However, any school committee member retains the right to request that an individual item be removed from the consent agenda for individual discussion. So at, these at this time, I'll entertain any requests by members of the school committee to remove items from the consent agenda. Well, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion on the consent agenda then. Motion approved. Second? Second. We've got a motion on the floor and properly seconded to adopt uh, the entire consent agenda. All in favor? Opposed? <laughs> Proved unanimously. So now, at this point in the meeting, I will turn the meet over, meeting over to Superintendent uh, Smith for the superintendent's report on teaching and learning. Thank you. Um, I think there's very little I have to say about what we all just saw in the auditorium. Um, it, it truly makes us proud to know the type of education that we prepare our students for, that we deliver to our students, and it's a great uh, opportunity for us to be able to celebrate that. Um, so congratulations to all of those award recipients and their families this evening. Um, at this point, I would like to, as we've done all year long, is turn it over to our student representative, Jessica Freeborn, to share with us what's happening at Brockton High School. Hello everyone. Well, today was our last day for Science MCAS for sophomores, so we're all very excited leaving. The feeling of relief and just, it was all over the place, so everyone was running out the doors. We're all very happy and everyone was saying how confident they felt with all the hard work they'd put in the last two days, so that was great. Um, moving on, tomorrow is student elections for juniors, so good luck to all those running for uh, positions. Um, Okay. This Saturday, June 7th, is our graduation at 2 o'clock. So goodbye to all our seniors. We will miss you very much. And I just want to mention, last Thursday was um, the last concert of the year for the music department. And it was a spectacular concert. And everyone really loved it. And a great job and well done to all those who performed. And that's what's happening at Brockton High. Great. And I would like to add, um, last Wednesday evening, uh, for the second year in a row, I had the opportunity to go to the Brockton High Senior Prom. Uh, once again, uh, looking at how beautiful everybody looked, how handsome, how well they conducted themselves, how inclusive they were of every student there. That dance floor was filled. I will tell you there were a number of teachers up there dancing with the students. Um, just impressed with, with the overall feeling that night. and, and again, Again, truly a celebration of, of all the wonderful things that are ahead for these uh, young students. So congratulations again you know, to our senior class. Great night. Um, I do want to move on to uh, a park update. Uh, as you know, um, the park has been field tested in Brockton and many other communities uh, in the Commonwealth this past year. We are finally at the end of our field testing this year. And just to update you, at our high school, including Edison Academy and the B.B. Russell School, we've had a total of 166 students testing, and they were using a paper assessment. They were in paper and pencil. They were not using technology. And again, this wasn't our decision. This was a decision by Pearson, the company that is uh, field testing the park test. We also presently uh, have a computer-based assessment going on at the Hancock School, 333 students. At our Raymond School, uh, which includes, of course, our middle school level there, uh, 667 students for a total of 1,000 students. And Dr. Cancel uh, will be able to, you know, speak to us certainly about, you know, when we have completed this this year, uh, some of our concerns, the challenges that we faced, and to give you an overall assessment. But more importantly, and I do believe that the school committee members recently received a memo from the Mass Association for School Committees. And one of the things that has been presented to superintendents in the Commonwealth is we have a decision to make. And there is a timeline on our decision to make. And in looking at what type of a decision, it is what is being uh, recommended from your legal counsel and the Mass Association for uh, School Superintendents Council uh, telling us that it is a policy decision. It should be a recommendation uh, from the superintendent and approved by the school committee. I would like us to work on it together. I would like to be able to provide you with some information in the packet uh, this Friday coming up of how we're going to be reaching this decision. Uh, the option is that there are communities that are allowed to stay with MCAS. And that being said, 
for all students throughout the Commonwealth, grade 10 students through the class of 2018 for their competency determination will be taking MCAS. There will be no change there. But our decision is to make a decision whether next year it's not going to be both of them, it's not going to be field testing. Our decision will be for the rest of the students in the district whether we want to go all park or do we want to stay with MCAS. There are some things and factors that we will look at. If we choose to go with PARC, they will allow us to decide. Some parts could be the paper and pencil, and others could be using our technology. And you know that we're facing the same thing many districts are. You know, we've heard uh, Dan Vigen actually talk last evening. No, we are not at the point where we can say our whole district would be able to take uh, a computer-based test. So that's a decision we have to make. Another uh, decision that they're sharing with superintendents is if you choose PARC, you would be held harmless, in fact, as far as your accountability levels. In other words, if you're at a certain level, you would be guaranteed not to move down a level, but if you had the opportunity to move up, you would be allowed with how they configure that, you would be allowed to move up in accountability status. So these are all things that we need to, to discuss. Um, another thing we want to talk about, again, is I'm not sure what's happening with PARC coming in, and there is resistance, but the one thing I am sure of is Common Core is here to stay. So whether it is MCAS with more of a Common Core focus, or we go with PARC, which is the so-called new generation of tests, those are the factors. And again, I'll share with you information, and I will make a recommendation to you. Uh, tonight, I would like to uh, actually set up a subcommittee for us to be able to have some discussion uh, on that matter. Mrs. Joyce. What is the deadline in making the decision? It, the window is open, I believe, until June 30th. And at June 30th, I even think until October 1st, I'm looking at Deputy Superintendent Barry, I think October 1st is kind of a drop dead time to let them know. So they're talking about the earlier you give them a decision, okay. you will be, if you choose park, you will be considered. So I would like to have the decision at least made before June 30th. We will submit that. And then if we make any changes and have discussions during the summer, right. then we'll have until October 1st, I believe, to make so that change. So we get through the budget. Correct. And then focus on park. Okay. And as I said, you will find um, <laughs> some very interesting information. I'll provide for you the, you must have the letter from the Mass Association yep. for School Committees. I'll provide the one from the school superintendents. There is a document from the DESE. Um, We've had uh, webinars, I believe a number of our staff members uh, have sat through, so we will uh, make that recommendation to you. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. And next we have uh, the FY15 budget update. Um, I, I again want to publicly thank the school committee. This has not been an easy task. Uh, we have spent a lot of hours. Uh, we have again, uh, including my staff, um, we've certainly worked with executive directors, directors, coordinators, principals. We've called people in to understand line by line every item in our budget. This has been a very, very difficult process. Um, I can't think one of us is walking away feeling good uh, about the process and what it means for our district. You know that I have concern about this budget. The reality is we are before the city council on Monday evening, June 9th, presenting this budget. So I guarantee to all of you that I will talk to the council about the hard work. Um, about our recommendations at that time. Now, when we left uh, last evening, we had looked at programmatic cuts, we had looked at ordinary maintenance, and I believe the figure that we ended up coming up with was $5.45 million. And by uh, approving these cuts, one of the things we talked about was it is imperative to start to look at a number of concerns. One was starting to bring back staff, and I want to reiterate so that there is no confusion about this. One of the things that we also talked about last night was a priority of how we look at the, the cuts that we have to make and how we start to bring back our personnel. And before I very quickly talk about our district priorities that we set last night, I want to make sure that I've told everybody, and when you look at those students out there, 
it isn't just one group of people that takes credit for that. That is credit for every single one of us. When I hear this young teacher come forward and talk about what it meant, not only to be a teacher in the Brockton Public Schools, but to also have been that student. So it's important for us to understand that the hard work begins of trying to bring back the people that make a difference. I need to have teachers in those classrooms. You know, we talked about the support staff, or many of it for compliance issues, our paraprofessionals, our MTAs, for our building and our building management, our administrative assistants, our custodians, you know, our, our non-union staff. Every one of you is important and every one of you makes a difference. But at this point here, we're setting some priorities. We will continue to work hard. I've told you, every dollar, every grant, you know, will and the work doesn't end with this budget. As the teacher just mentioned that came forward, you know, where do we go from here? I've talked to the mayor about this endlessly that we need to get together and work with other mayors, other superintendents in gateway cities. We need to take a look at, as we said, equity in the funding that comes across all of our desks. So I just want you all to realize that when we go before the city council on Monday evening, that's not the end of it. We will continue to advocate. We will continue to look at efficiencies. Uh, our budget director, every single day he's in my office and we're looking to identify another efficiency, another area, another grant where we can shift funds. So so, you know, please be aware that this is not the end of the budget process. I just want to quickly mention, um, you know, um, Mayor Carpenter last evening, some of the priorities that we set in bringing back positions. We talked about compliance issues with special education, English language learners, our grant requirements, our legal mandates. We certainly don't want to put our um, operations in such a situation where we have any kind of oversight from uh, federal or state. Another priority we talked about, which is very important, and you asked me to look into this, we'll talk about class size, uh, school size. Uh, we're protecting instruction in the classroom. So with the cuts that you allowed us to make last night to bring back jobs, that was our focus today. Um, and again, maintaining focus on student needs beyond the classroom to also support our students. Our next one was grant funding, examining all grant funding, seeking new grant funds, researching private foundations. Just before before I left, I opened an email from our director of the bilingual department, Jose Pinheiro. He lets me know that 23,000 more dollars came in for a summer grant that allows us to bring additional students to a summer program for um, our English language learners in the CEL program. So these are the kind of things that are happening. I mean, granted, that's a summer program, but these are the things that are happening every day. And again, our uh, last priority, we talked about, again, maintenance, uh, excuse me, uh, effective operations of our facilities and our building management. So when we talk about maintenance of our existing facilities, you know that that is a priority. When you look at, we are stretched to the limit. There basically is not a seat to be had. Uh, we have buildings that are in need of maintenance. We actually have some good news to share with you this evening about that. I need to look at the day-to-day -day operations, how we're staffing buildings, our safety and security of our students and our staff. And lastly, I want to just reiterate to everybody, we talked about district efficiencies eliminating out-of-state travel unless mandated by a grant, limiting outside professional development providers and doing that in-house, uh, reducing crossing guard posts, conducting an energy uh, savings audit, which has been conducted and something that we will focus on to look at efficiencies in energy savings. We talked about reducing substitute teachers and coming up with additional ideas uh, in that line item. Um, and again, reviewing efficiencies across the district. We do have a link open, and we're encouraging people to share with us efficiencies that we can not pay attention to. So that being said, um, today, we went back to the drawing board. We spent quite a few hours, um, once again, looking at the programmatic cuts, uh, the ordinary maintenance cuts. And what I will tell you uh, again uh, tonight, if you look at making up that shortfall, we were able to, um, at this point, I'm going to recommend to you, and I'll share with you some of the class sizes, that we will be bringing back uh, with those cuts 154 certified uh, staff members. And I do want you to know that I had to take into account uh, eight staff members that are on leave and have alerted us that they will be returning to the Brockton Public School. So that made a difference when I look at the 199 
pink slips uh, reduction in force for our certified staff members. So today we identified uh, across the district that was looking at classrooms, looking at instruction from elementary to middle school to high school, 154 staff members. Um, there was some money left there and that's where some of the compliance issues will come in. We talked last night about focusing on our MTAs, not paraprofessionals, that support um, a number of our special needs classrooms, our bilingual classrooms uh, that are again part of our compliance. Um, what we will do at this point again is um, I'll bring up, I'll start with uh, Deputy Superintendent Liz Barry and we'll start to talk about what the numbers are looking like at our elementary school with the uh, cuts as they stand right now. Dr. Barry, can I? And you also had asked me, uh, and this was a little bit different, Dr. Cancel and I went back and forth on this quite a bit, but you had asked me um, as a school committee to give a three-year average, because as we talk to you at this point in time, what this means for class size throughout the district. From June 1st until September 1st, we know that there will be registrations in the Brockton Public Schools. You asked me to go back and look at a three-year average, so I'm not talking about an October 1st report. I didn't look towards October. That doesn't mean that after September 1st, there might not be additional students that come across our doors. But from June 1st till September 1st, when we open school we took a three-year average and uh, you'll be able to take a look at that so for elementary I believe we're looking at an additional 85 uh, middle school an additional 29 and when you look at the high school I do want you to understand that the past couple of years we have done an excellent job of identifying <coughs> those students that either have re-engaged after dropping out or those students that we catch before they drop out and a lot of this has to do with our multiple pathways one being of course our Edison Academy so that's a little skewed as far as our high school number goes I don't want you to think the 207 students students are showing up on the doorsteps of Brockton High School between June 1st and September 1st. It was a little bit more difficult to calculate. So, Ms. Barrett? Sure. I actually um, put a handout on your um, places before you came in um, and it was in response to the request that we um, talk a little bit about um, class size averages at, at each level. So I'm going to talk about the elementary level and what you have in front of you is really just some projections for kindergarten and grades one through five. Uh, for the grades one through five we base the class averages on taking the current kindergarten partners in and rolling them over to grade one. Um, so that's how we're getting those class size averages for grades one through five. And as you could see, um, one through five, we are um, as low as 25 and as high as 28. Um, and the important point to make here is that um, this is just looking at our current enrollment. Um, so we're looking at the kids who are currently enrolled in the Brockton Public Schools and we're rolling them over to the next grade level. As Dr. Cancel indicated and as Superintendent Smith indicated, um, we have experienced growth at all levels. So um, we need to be careful that when we're looking at these class averages, which are already um, starting high, um, that we keep in mind that that's just looking at the, the, the children that we have in seats right now. The other thing that um, I asked Soraya to help me with was um, thinking about where we are with kindergarten registrations now versus where we were last year. So uh, last year, June 1st at this time, we had um, 1,051 completed kindergarten registrations and um, June 1st of this year, we're already at 1,215 completed registrations. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, we've actively pursued um, families enrolling er early, registering early so that we can better prepare ourselves for kindergarten and we've had a series of kindergarten showcase showcases across the district so we're trying to get registrations in earlier and and that could be one um, one one reason as to why but one of the other reasons is is that we could again be experiencing um, you know a, a, an increase in enrollment and influx of of students um, 
But if you have any questions about this, I'm happy to answer them. The other thing that I will do is I will be able to give you um, the projected enrollment and what it looks like rolling one grade, lo one grade level over to the next level for next year, what that looks like school by school, so that you're really looking um, a little bit deeper than um, just general averages. Sorry, uh, Mr. Monticello. Good evening, Mrs. Mary. Um, Mr. Monticello. So with respect to these numbers, these projections, um, in order to maintain this level, we would need to recall 154 teachers. This, these numbers, uh, these class averages are based on our existing teaching population, meaning that we did not account for the fact that teachers were, um, if there was a reduction in force. The other thing that's worth um, mentioning here is that we already saw that class size at the elementary level when we did this um, exercise, um, we already felt that class size was high. You know that we were going to be starting the year um, with averages that were pretty high. So in the superintendent's recommended budget, we actually um, requested additional elementary positions that we obviously did not get. So it's it's really twofold. It's it's making sure that we get our existing teaching staff back. Um, that would be 199. Yeah, but but I'm just talking about the elementary level here. Okay. But this is working with, these averages assume that everyone is coming back at the elementary level because I'm taking our current classes and I'm rolling them over. I'm not pulling any out. Okay, so then what does that impact, how does that impact middle and high school? If we're, t if we're bringing back 154 <laughs> teachers, if that's the recommendation. Right, the recommendation, and we'll share with you, uh, you know, Dr. Murray will come up and share with you middle school. Uh, Sharon Wolder isn't here, so I'll talk to you a little bit about the high school numbers that we were bringing back out of the 154. So bringing back 154 will allow you to continue what's ongoing currently mm -hmm. in the elementary, right? No, we'd have to bring back 199 teachers to continue at the elementary. When, when we did these projections, we did not take out those positions that we could essentially lose as a result of a reduction in force. Um, and the rationale behind that is to really validate the need for making sure that we start next year maintaining those positions. So basically, I, I think at this point here, if we're placing this budget to the city council on June 9th, then these numbers would certainly go up. And we saw numbers today that were some classes close to 28, 30, 34 in a class. Right. Well, I think that that projection needs to be presented Monday evening. And um, if, if we're also going to need to see in order to maintain what we have when you're telling me that we need 199 teachers called back. Correct. And, and I think, again, you know, what Deputy Sup Superintendent Barry, you know, is saying to you, when we do talk about the superintendent's recommended budget, you know, there were items in there to relieve the large class sizes that we have at the growing elementary level. Um, so looking at the situation now, yes, I will present to the city council if right now I'm able to bring back, it ends up being 100 and, 154 of the positions, you know, according to the cuts that we've made here. Then the class sizes will be much larger than this at the elementary that level. That definitely needs to be presented. Um, so in order for the committee to bring back 199 of the teachers that were serve with a reduction in force notice, then every single para, MTA, custodian, administrative assistant needs to be, need to be let go. With the cuts that we're presently facing? Right. That's, that's what we did today. Today, what we did was, there was a little bit of money left over when we did the 154, and that was to be able to have an opportunity to look at some of the compliance issues for MTAs and paras. But when we left last evening, I think that was the mandate, to bring the teaching positions back and to look at the MTAs and the paras. Okay, so, so even
even if we if we bring back all of the teaching positions, then we are still facing a deficit of about eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I'm sorry. You ch I'm if, sorry. You're talking one hundred and ninety-nine. Um, if we bring back one hundred and ninety-nine teaching positions, and we and we if we get additional funds to do that, we're saying. No, I'm talking about the, if the budget that we currently have. Right, we're only at... The $160 million budget that we have. Right. We've got the $5.7 million gap. We basically, uh, we basically last evening um, used OM and programmatic cuts and came up with approximately $2.3 million, or 2.5, I think it was. So the difference... Um, is about 3.1 million. So if if you're going to subtract the personnel cuts, omitting the 6.4 million of the 199 teachers, we're still we're still short 850 thousand dollars. So we're going to. Aldo's giving me a look. Like, what is he talking about? <laughs> Just on top of my hand, we have about 8.6 million in personnel costs. Right. And, then five five. and out of that 6.4 teachers or certified staff, right? Right. We're enough that the post 6.4 to bring back. We have enough to bring back about 160 teachers. <laughs> That's, that's what I'm. My point is, you cannot bring back 199 teachers. Correct. Correct. So, so we're 850,000 short of bringing back teachers. Right. So we're 850,000 dollars short. Right. About 2.2 million for the remainder of the positions. Right. So based so, on. So at a minimum, you have to lay off about 45. I'm sorry, not less than that. It's 130 teachers. 199 minus the 154 at this point. That's 45. They weren't counted in the RIF mix. Okay. But um, All right. I, I see what we I see what we have ended up. With. Okay. Uh, Dr. Murray, would you like to come and share with us the impact on middle schools? Dr. Murray, would you like to come and share with us the impact on middle schools? I'm sorry. Yeah. On this map. Um, I, to I completely agree with, with uh, Tom's concern about only bringing back 124 of the 199, because based on these numbers, we're already going to be short-staffed at the, at, in the classrooms based on current numbers. Now, you've given us another sheet that projects in the elementary, another 85 students, which is about, if you take 25 students per class, that's another three and a half classrooms. Mm -hmm. And in the middle school level, that's a little over one classroom at 29. <coughs> that's not even counting the 207 kids at the high school and, and the impact on class sizes there. Based on bringing all 199 staff members back, or teachers back, it doesn't address a projected gain. So you're you're recommending that we we short staff our, our classrooms by 45 staff members, and then we've got a projected gain. We're going to look at even higher class sizes. I don't see how you can recommend 154 coming back. Well, I'm when I think when we have to address the class size needs, that's a priority. 154 doesn't address that. Right, it, but looking at the monies that we had available to bring staff back, we were able to bring back 154 classroom teachers and... Based on certain cuts, but if we take other cuts, if we took every single other cut from the staff levels, it gives us another two, two, 224, no, let's say 2 million, 248,000, almost 2.5, 2.25 5, million if we take every other staffing position up here. The 260, the 315, the 411, the 44, the 840, 336, and 442. Okay. And the staffing level's up top. Yes. Correct? 
Mr. Petronio, I'm... Those tolls have already been counted in the bottom. That's where you get... <coughs> the way that she reads, the, the, the red line at the top is what was short on about 5.7 million. Right. The green line at the bottom is 11 million of tax. That's all those positions plus all the programmatic plus right. all the ordinary maintenance. So with all those tasks, we now have five Point. So you've already included all of those other staffing positions in that 11 million? Yes. Okay. That's what I needed to understand. I was really hoping you didn't include those. <laughs> I thought I missed something. Okay. So where do you get the 850 then? Because the one, the 154. Even with 154, we're still 850,000 short, or we're balanced. We're short. We're short. 154, we're balanced based on the cuts we made last time. Okay, so we have if to we find. Want to bring back all 199. Then we're short 850. Short. We have to Correct. find that because we can't have these class sizes. We have to find it. Okay, Cliff, you're up. No, <laughs> no thank you. <laughs> Just a quick question. So, sure. um, if we bring back 154, at least 45 that we're not bringing back, do we have a, a sense of what those 45 look like? Where they're going to be? Are they evenly distributed? Are we going to see a heavier loss on the high school side or on the? Um, it seems that we're keeping the class sizes lower on the elementary side, and I'm just concerned about the 45 who picks up that, that loss. You're, what actually, the class sizes that you're seeing on the elementary are larger than this based on right now, if we're talking 154 mm -hmm. staff members coming back between elementary, middle, and high school. And we'll talk a little bit about the middle and the high school. But what we did do today was we went back and we looked at every single teacher that had a reduction in force and we identified are they a classroom teacher that provides instruction. That's not to say that a school adjustment counselor, um, a nurse, uh, I could go through the list, a guidance counselor, um, an art specialist, a music specialist. We put those to the side right now so we could focus on instruction in the classroom. That would be our first phase of bringing back positions based on the uh, amount of money that we had from last night, the 5.45 million. That's what we base that on. So the 45 so teachers are, it could be not they, teachers they in the classroom. They are through each of the different levels. Um, one of the things that we, again, focused on was our largest group is elementary as far as where the numbers are, where the population is, where your largest class sizes are. That's not to say when I talked to Dr. Murray and asked him how this would affect middle school, he's going to share with you that depending on what positions he brings back, he could have students in a cafeteria basically in the old study period type things. If we didn't bring back an art teacher at a middle school, if we didn't have a certain specialist, it clearly you know, affects the school. Uh, Sharon Wolder is at an event this evening for, I believe, the band boosters. But just looking at the high school, we immediately again, and you know, Sharon looked at me and said, Kathy, in your superintendent's budget, I told you I needed nine more math teachers. I understand that. But at this point here, with what we had at the high school, we went through, there were 42 members of the high school staff that got reduction in force notices. Um, and there were from the uh, from those uh, 42, we were going to be calling back 37 classroom teachers immediately. There were still seven positions. It was guidance, it was administrators, uh, music, phys ed, adjustment counselors, bilingual counselors that were still not back in that first wave. And I want to share with you some of the class sizes at the high school based on that. In math, it was 27 to 33 students in a class. Foreign language, 30 to 34 students for Spanish, 20 to 25 for Chinese. Uh, at this point here, we don't even have enough languages for everybody to get into a four-year college, some that want to continue to take Chinese. Science, we kept those classes at 30, at 30, because of safety. So those are concerns we have. They're working with, you know that, with chemicals and labs. 
English, we've kept it 30 to 1. Our social science classes were 25, 28 to 35 students in a class. We're concerned, and you know that uh, Principal Walter has come before you with accreditation. We think that that put, puts us at risk at accreditation as far as those kinds of numbers. But that's what we were faced with today. Thank you. And I just, you know, just to pick up on that point, um, I, the, the elementary structure allows us to, to really speak about it in this type of detail. Um, just because of the way that the day is structured, um, the middle school and high school level, it, th this type of illustration is, is, is more difficult. So Dr. Murray is actually going to speak to you a little bit about um, the impact that um, reduction in these positions could actually cause. Uh, thank you. Uh, we're, again, not in the uh, same type of schedule format as the elementaries. Um, our core classes, those would be the, the typical math, science, English, and social studies. The numbers will average between 28 and 30 students. In some cases, as you get uh, in the seventh and eighth grades, you may have a, a class with a, an advanced level or some other kind of special requirement where you could have upwards to 34 students. Obviously, that would be balanced uh, in a different period. Period. The big concern is specialists. Um, several years ago, the middle schools were uh, tasked with uh, determining um, specialists that they could live without, and uh, many gave up, for instance, the libraries, uh, computer labs, things like that. And as you build a schedule during the day, it's extremely important that you have uh, these specialists available. Uh, we've all adapted, but there are instances already where we may have 60 students in a gym class with one phys ed teacher. And uh, eventually, if we aren't able to replace some of these other specialists, like art teachers or tech ed or whomever, uh, you could run into a situation where uh, you would need to house these students in kind of a study period, which is, again, uh, not, not in their best interest. It is what it is. But uh, So we're very concerned uh, about moving forward, uh, not having um, those options in terms of scheduling. Uh, the specialists currently now have a little smaller class size, perhaps 23. 325 students, but again, the loss of that would require us doubling up, and uh, you know, you'd end up with 50, perhaps 60 students in, in a time frame someplace in your building, and uh, obviously, it's not not what any of us want. You know, we have a budget meeting, another budget meeting coming up, um, I believe, on the 11th. Uh, I'm not sure if you're telling us to go back to the table and start to look at sports. Do we start to look at additional extracurricular activities? Do we, you know, do we go back and make sure again that teachers are in the classroom and and we can we can do without there were there were other things that we could have brought to you. We were trying to maintain some kind of a balanced education for the students. And uh, I don't want you to think for one minute that my hope was that this budget would stand. And I've been very clear about that. And I hope to advocate for additional monies that we can bring in. We have until June 25th, which is our last day of school, to bring back our certified uh, staff members and our non-certified staff members before we're dealing with unemployment and, and other things that many of us don't have any taste for. Um, well, math says that we can bring back 164, but whatever. Um, but we still don't know what we have with regard to attrition, right? Right. Can I address the 164? Yeah. So with the 154, there were eight that alerted us that they are coming back from leave. So, so that brought me to about 162, and we were looking for a little bit of leeway with some of the compliance issues. That's where we we're at today, and that's why. Okay. Uh, now, have we talked yes, about attrition yet? Because I don't... Is that factored in now, though, the attrition? No, I haven't factored in attrition because as it stands right now, when we're trying to get back to 199 positions, anyone that does retire will replace. Because we're trying to maintain the full staffing level we have in place for certified staff. We're looking to reduce, you know, you said to us, reduce 20 positions permanently from the budget. That would, that would make more sense. But right now, where we're, we're our enrollment is growing, and we're trying to maintain class size. Looking 
out of attrition, um, factoring that in doesn't help us. There have been some years where you have had administrators retire and you didn't replace that administrator. Presently, I don't have those positions available. You know, if somebody were to take an early retirement, if it was an administrator, if it didn't affect the classroom, then we can take a look at that. And we will, you know, that letter is being prepared to go out to staff members. I can't tell you this is a year that, I mean, the year upcoming, I'm not talking presently, that we have a lot of retirements projected, but we are sending that out to staff to see if we can encourage an incentive for an early retirement. And that we could look at, that would be, of course, with attrition, we wouldn't bring a position back. Great. And moving on grants? You know, not at, at this time, um, you know, not where we stand today. We're continuing, I think I shared with you some of the grants that we're working on in the grants department. Um, as soon as that happens, I will, uh, you know, immediately, we will start to bring people back based on grant positions. One of the ones I know we have been talking about, we have a grant called the Carol White Grant. Uh, an amount came in uh, about a month ago and it was halted. And it wasn't halted by us, it was halted by the federal government who were looking at the awards at that time. So again, we are aware that there are some positions in that grant, there are some, some phys ed positions, and I believe there is an administrator position in there. We're trying to understand the language. It talks about surplanting. I don't want to surplant, but right now we have lost certain phys ed positions. Is that a grant that once I get clarification on that, that I can bring back some of the positions we have lost in that particular area and immediately we'll go there with that grant? So I think it's a fluid situation, and you know, as I said, it's, it's something we're working on every day. Uh, but at this point, I believe tonight was to prepare us for Monday evening. Yeah, definitely. But uh, I guess we definitely have to, Monday evening, express what we, where we are at. And then for our next meeting, um, we're gonna need, it, I guess, another sheet some more recommended cuts in order, if, if you need 199. Correct. Then we're gonna need additional items to consider eliminating. Well, first of all, um, when we talk about Monday evening, uh, as I said, uh, I have the opportunity uh, to speak to the city council. I will be very, very clear. Uh, I will start to talk about, um, again, it took me a whole year. I was elected as superintendent about a year ago. I spent a good part of this year talking to constituents, talking to businesses, talking to parents, looking at a district review that came in in November, looking at challenges. I mean, I've sat here with you. I did the entry plan and talked to you again about what we needed to move the district forward. Many of those positions were in the superintendent's recommended budget. We then very quickly went to phase two of the budgeting, which was our level services budget. And that was, I believe, at 166 million, which would have allowed us to operate as we're operating today. Even then, we had concerns. We had concerns about class size at the elementary level, math teachers at the high school level. There were a lot of concerns. And when you talk about that 166 million, you know what we did that night. We immediately took out the facility master plan. We took out you know, millions of dollars in technology that we need. We started to really shave down to even exist as we are today, uh, to where we presently are today. So as far as that opportunity, Monday evening, I will make that very clear to the City Council, you know, where we have come in a very short time, and I will share my concerns, and you know, is this the best we can do for our students? I've made it very clear to everybody, I have no problem advocating, I have no problem talking about my recommendations for how the City can help us, and I'll continue to do that but you're right on the 11th uh, at that point as we get close to the 25th if we need to make harder decisions and programmatic cuts you're going to cut very very deep into this core with with again you just sat in there tonight and you watched you know the awards for our students um, I guarantee you it'll affect that, but I think that those, those harder deeper nastier cuts need to be expressed Monday night do you know what I'm saying because that's that's where we currently are at. Even the last night's finance committee meeting, um, you know, we weren't at that point. But after your after you took our instructions about what is the number of certified staff we would need in order to maintain the classroom, you basically found that you need 199. So in order to do that, we're still shy. Um, 
multiply what, 32,000 now though, per teacher? Per callback, yes. Per callback, right, 32,000 per callback. Mm -hmm. So that comes to about one, $1.1 $1 .1 million. So Mr. Minicello, what you want me to identify is if I'm not able to get that, how much deeper are the cuts because we intend to bring those teachers back and that will be at the expense of Program. other programs that we've had in the Brockton Public right. Schools. Right. I mean, and they need to hear that. I, I, I will do that. I'm good. The 45 that you're not recommending that we bring back at this point. I, right. I know you're not positive. You don't. Right. Based on this based amount on this, of money that we've identified that for 45. Cuts. Okay. Of those non classroom positions, can you identify where those positions are within yes. the system? Yes. So we need to know what, if you're bringing back 154 in those all classroom positions, then the 45, where are they? I think they're, they're at I think three Ray different levels. Brought that up. Yeah. Okay. So again, you're so if we're not bringing back nurses and guidance counselors, we need to know where they are okay. and what impact they're going to have on the system. Because I I okay, had, put that in the I had it in my head that you? these are all classroom teachers. Not that I want to see them cut, but I want to know where those 45 are. Okay, so in Friday's packet, would you like me to have that list of the 154 that we've identified and the 45 presently that have not been called back based on this budget? Right. With the, the idea that what you've told me is we will cut deeper and make sure we're bringing back teaching positions, certified awesome positions. Teachers, yeah. Okay, I'll provide because that. Because that 199 includes non-classroom positions. It does. Okay. Um, as I said, I just mentioned some at the high school. Um, specialist nurses, school adjustment counselors, guidance, guidance counselors. Uh, I think we need to see that list. I'll, I'll see exactly where I'll they are. I'll give you every one of them. I'll and give you the um, on the attrition uh, question that, that Tom had asked about, um, if that person that's retiring as a classroom teacher, we need to replace that position, that classroom teacher, whether they're retiring or not. We are, I think we can make up some funding differential is the fact that if that the incentive, hopefully we have some people that are taking advantage of the in retirement incentive so we can replace that with a person that isn't as high on the salary scale as the person that is yes. taking advantage of the incentive. Right, that, so hopefully that can bring in some Correct. additional funds, mm -hmm. hopefully. I don't hold too much weight on no, it. And but that's a good it's, point. It's Anybody it's retiring is at a point in the salary schedule, which is certainly more than a, a first year teacher mm -hmm. would be. And then the high school cuts um, that we're facing, what impact is that going to make on our students being able to get the course level work to get into a four-year college. If it's going to impact their ability to take the courses they need, the number of science courses, the number of math courses, the number of um, I think we're offering foreign the courses. courses. There were concerns about the foreign language. It's just that the, you know, the classroom numbers that we had. And as I mentioned to you, one of the recommended um, in the superintendent's recommended budget was nine additional math teachers for the high school. Right, so, so obviously there's a need for those math teachers and if we're capping like a science class at 30, we're going to have students that aren't going to get, being able to get the science courses they need to get into college. That's my concern if we cut those, those positions. Well, again, we're trying not to cut any classroom position that currently exists at the high school. My understanding is those class sizes would be larger, and in fact, we did make recommendations in this budget. You sat for curriculum subcommittee meetings where parents came up to you about the opportunities for language. And I believe one of the opportunities that came up where the children are taking the Chinese classes at the Davis, at the Pluff Academy, and when they came to the high school, we didn't have enough teachers to teach that class, and they had to take other languages. Mm -hmm. So that was being addressed in the first budget that was presented to you. It is no more, you know, we're not addressing it right it puts now. Puts them behind because mm -hmm. then they're starting at square one with the new foreign language instead of moving on. Um, and just one other thing, um, as far, we still have a deficit in the non-net school spending. 
part of the budget, correct? We do. Mr. Thomas, do you want to address the non-net school spending? The mayor did give us $500,000 at the uh, last school committee meeting. It brought us, of course, we've had increased enrollment. So it brought us to a point that we, and we're also looking at the crossing guard post. We are still working with the non-net school spending money. But there was a concern about the number of buses. We are still short. We'll be short four buses um, because of the enrollment. Obviously, we're up. Yeah. Kids last year and projected another 400 this year. Mm -hmm. 100 kids that you, usually you project that half of them need to be on buses. So right. um, that's, as you know, the same money that comes out of um, you know a non-net is for crossing guards. That means that we need to limit. Uh, I think right now we have 135 crossing guard posts throughout the city. We need to look to um, reduce the number so we can take that money and put it yep. to buses. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's still in process. Yes. Is it seven hundred thousand we're short on non net school spending? Seven hundred thousand of the requested amount. That requested amount included three more buses. But as I said, we'll look at the crossing guard okay. posts and we'll try to make up as much as we can of that seven hundred thousand. But I agree with Tom. I think the city council needs to know exactly where those forty five positions are at least and what impact they have based on what we have right now. And then also with the projected enrollments, how it's going to impact class sizes when we don't when we don't have those teachers to put in those classrooms for the increased enrollment. I'm presently preparing information for the, the Monday night meeting. Um, I'm doing, I, I know that time is kind of of the essence. You have a number of people, I believe, presenting that evening. We're not the only ones. Mm -hmm. I would like to do a very quick PowerPoint, make sure there's something in their hands, and I'll make sure that class sizes are based on the 162. So it's 154. Remember, there are an additional eight, eight coming back. And we'll let them know exactly as best we can where the class sizes are at that point. And what I will tell them again is where we're going to continue to meet. And on the 11th, uh, if we're going to make that a priority to bring back the rest of those positions, how deep that cuts into other offerings in the Brockton Public mm -hmm. Schools. So I will come back with another group of programmatic cuts for you because there's no place else for us to go. Thank you. And uh, again, that's my update on the uh, FY15 budget. I think at this point, we need to approve a couple of sets of finance subcommittee minutes, one of them in particular, the, uh, the meeting of May 27th, because of that meeting. Um, we moved as a body to approve the early retirement incentive, um, so we need to ratify that so that the administration can present that as an option to um, the membership, to school staff. So, um, sure. So, so at this point, um, let me just report in on the minutes of that meeting okay. because we have to approve the report. So, on May 27th. Uh, the finance subcommittee meeting met over at the Arno School. At that point in time, uh, the superintendent presented uh, her recommended budget, which was 173. However, based upon the uh, 2015 budget proposed by the mayor, of 166.35.189, we went through the preliminary pro programmatic operating um, ordinary maintenance and staffing level reduction cuts that were presented that evening. Um, further in that meeting, we were presented with a recommendation with respect to an early retirement incentive program where we unanimous, unanimously approved that presentation. So that is the report. So I would make a motion to approve that report of May 27, 2014. So we've got a motion to accept the report. Do I have a second? Second. Properly seconded. All in favor? And then I think we need a specific 
motion to approve the early retirement incentive as presented on May 27th. So I'll make that motion. Second. So then we've got a motion on the floor now to approve the early retirement incentive as outlined in the May 27th Finance Committee meeting. Properly seconded. All in favor? Passes unanimously. And the second set of minutes uh, come from the other last evening, June 3rd. At that meeting, we went into the proposed staffing level, programmatic, ordinary maintenance cuts in much more detail. Uh, we itemized a number of categories and we made recommendations that were still going to be subject to final review pending um, the uh, status of our budget. Um, we identified areas of concern and instructed the superintendent to come back with the impact upon classroom, classrooms throughout the district, which obviously she presented to us this evening. And um, we then made a decision to come back next week on the 11th, right, the 11th, uh, for further review uh, and in preparation of uh, our final numbers pending possibilities of uh, fluctuation if in fact other sources could be identified to uh, buffer the 166.35.189 figure. So. That was the minutes of our meeting of last evening. So motion, motion, to motion to accept the report. That yeah. report of June second. June second. Sorry. Yes. June second. Okay. So we've got a motion on the floor to accept the report of the June second finance committee meeting, seconded by Mr. Jordan. All in favor? And then I think we need to also make a motion and approve the. FY 2015 school committee net school pen, pending budget, which is currently at 160 million 635 189 as proposed by the mayor um, for submission to the city council uh, at the uh, meeting currently scheduled for Monday, June 9th. And that would be net school pending budget. Okay, so there's a motion to adopt the figure that. Mr. Minicello gave for net school spending? 166 35 189. Second. It's not right. Is that the right number? 166. One, 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 I said 160. 160 million. 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100
and also discussion of the health curriculum on that agenda. Could we also on that evening do the decision on park and the mm -hmm. policy? That'll be because we'll have the presentation. It's the same subcommittee. Okay. Okay. question. Yeah. So on the same evening then we'll also schedule a policy subcommittee for yeah. the purpose of adopting a policy regarding park. Yeah. Everyone's good with that? Yeah. Okay. And we did have some good news today if that's possible. Uh, Mr. Thomas, you want to come and talk to us about the math, uh, math School Building Assistance Program and your award today, our award today. Good evening. The um, MSBA contacted me this morning, um, and it, they are having their board meeting tomorrow, and they said they were going to invite four of our schools into the Accelerated Repair Program. This was formerly known as the Green Repair Program that we took part in um, three, three years ago that was completed two years ago. Uh, so the four schools in program, and actually the work to be done, the Ashfield, which would be roof, uh, roof replacement and boiler replacement, uh, two boilers actually. The Brookfield would be a full roof replacement. The Gilmore would be roof and boilers. And then the Barrett Russell would be windows. Uh, they'll vote on that f formally tomorrow at 10 a.m. and um, then obviously they will send a, le a letter to the mayor um, and then asking the mayor and the um, city council to enter into the feasibility study phase which is the phase where the architects come out uh, study the projects and basically put a price tag on it and then they come back to the mayor and the city council to basically um, look for the funding that is a total of a hundred and twenty day process so um, both sides are able to take a long look at the feasibility studies and be able to make a decision about funding um, um, again, we are still at the 80% reimbursement rate. Um, just looking at some quick numbers from the green repair program, that was 36 million last time for eight schools. Um, just trying to compare it with um, same size roof and boilers. Um, you know, just again, this is a rough estimate, probably somewhere between, this one would be about between 10 and 12 million, I would expect. Again, with taking into consideration inflation and um, what the roofs cost last time around. So that's just my educated guests so um, that would you know would would be on the hook the city would be on the hook for 20 percent of that so but again that would you know that's after the feasibility study and the MSBA does do it um, through a you know a, a pretty good process where you know you have plenty of time for um, decisions to be made and again just because you're invited into all four um, the city does not have to accept all four. They could come back and say, um, we're going to only fund, we only have the money to fund two of these or one of these. Um, you're not committed to all four. That decision's made as we move along. And then if we do accept any of them, we would go back and do another um, joint you know, building committee that we did with the city council last time. And uh, Mrs. Joyce, who can have that fun all over again. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that's it. So uh, the mayor, um, uh, Mr. Carpenter, you'd probably get a letter within the next two weeks or so. This is good news. Four out of yep. the six schools we applied for are approved and you know eligible for 80% reimbursement. And I think the first step in us being able to address the long-term needs and the growing population is to be able to prolong the life and properly maintain the buildings that we've got right now. So. Um, you know, the 80 percent potential 80 percent reimbursement is certainly good news and we'll look forward to uh, getting the notification and then getting the uh, evaluation underway thank you mrs choice oh. the, schools were the west boilers okay. and the keith school boilers so the good news out of that is the two that we were denied were are the cheapest projects. Right. Boilers are the right. cheap. Boilers right. run about two to three hundred thousand. It's really um, great to get the roofs. Uh, yeah, the roofs are the obviously windows. the roof projects are easily one point five to two million each roof. So and the Barrett windows yeah. were you that know that's really a that's good. a big one as well. Big bonus on that. Exactly. Now the process change changes a little bit this time because we don't select the architect and the project manager? Exactly. The MSBA um, assigns, them to assigns them to you. They have a group and they just basically go down the list and the next school system in line just they say here, here are your, your architects and here's your project manager. see how that plays out. Exactly. Okay, thank yep. you. Yep. Thank you. Right. Great news. 
Any other items to be referred to subcommittee? That's it? That's it? Yeah. Okay, under unfinished business, uh, enclosure 13, approval of the 2014-2015 supplemental school calendar. Motion has been properly made and seconded to approve the 2014-2015 supplemental school calendar. All in favor? Opposed? Approved unanimously. And then I guess under new business, uh, we've been previously provided with 2014-2015 uh, student handbooks. And I believe we're actually looking for the vote to approve those tonight. Yes, these are the, uh, this is the, Mr. Thomas, this is the draft version? Yes. Okay. So is there any discussion on student handbooks? I know those were all sent out to the school committee members in advance. Okay, then I'll entertain a motion. Second in. All in favor? Okay. Carries. Handbooks are approved. Uh, any other new business? One of the things I'd like to bring up under new business, uh, I think if you remember, I'm not sure if it was my interview or I'm not sure if it was time after that when we began uh, as an uh, elected official school committee and superintendent, one of the things I talked about was your time commitment, which has been even more interesting to me as this year has gone on, especially being in negotiations with all of our unions. Uh, the time that you commit is tremendous. And one of the things I also had talked about was highlighting some of the good work that you do to make sure that people hear the things happening with our school committee. So on a very happy note, uh, our new school committee member, um, Alicia Clark was recently awarded from Brockton Community Schools the Albert Berenselli Award. So we are very, very excited about that. And I don't want to steal the thunder uh, of the Berenselli Award itself uh, with our new director, Maxine Richardson. There will be, I'm told, a special ice cream party coming up and it will be at the Ashfield Middle School because that's where uh, Alicia Clark actually goes during her, if you can imagine, free time and works with our special needs students. And the letter that came from Christina Lutz talking about what you do for those youngsters where everyone's accepted, everyone's a shining star, whether it's arts and craft, whether it's attention, everybody belongs and I'm sure Albert Bar Baroncelli would be very proud of that work that you're doing with our students. So we're very proud proud of you. So, thank you. So, Mr. Minichel was referring to a Christmas ice cream party we had from Peaceful Meadows. It did not arrive. I invited him to come. I, I think I owe this whole school district a big ice cream party. Make sure you assign that to someone. I promise, I will make sure Maxine Richardson takes care of the ice cream party. <laughs> Are we looking to go into executive session? Um, not that I know Not of. that I'm aware of either, okay. Yeah. Just making sure. Anyone else under new business? If there's no other new business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second, all in favor? We are officially adjourned.